Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, Certified Astrologer. And in this segment, I'm going to be going over some of the uh, planetary configurations that are available um, as it pertains to the summer solstice. Um, summer solstice happens to be the longest day um, of the year. Um, and it always occurs as the sun enters zero degrees, zero minutes, Cancer. Um, this doesn't change um, each year. Uh, now, what changes are um, the ascendant uh, and looking at the location of the moon and other planetary bodies. So let's get started here. Um, of course, I said uh, the sun is in Cancer um, uh, every year when solstice happens, and then um, the and then Virgo is the ascendant. So when you're thinking about Virgo, uh, meth uh, uh, methodical sometimes, and um, Mercury is the ruler of Virgo. Um, and so um, looking at Mercury in the 10th house, um, and if you compared um, to the new moon chart that just um, passed a couple days ago, then you can see that everything was below the horizon. And at that time I said, um, there's not too much that we can actually uh, see um, on the surface. Now um, everything has flipped to the point that um, now we can see all these planetary bodies above the horizon. So what that means is that um, looking at some of the um, s s some of the um, ideas that might have uh, been conceptualized, um, these can be uh, these can kind of flourish. Um, and uh, it, other than Mercury, um, I think what it's important to note is that Mercury is in Gemini. Um, in which uh, it would be in kind of an exalted form since uh, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So it's in, in, his, in its own house, um, so to speak. So this makes Mercury a lot more powerful um, within the astrological chart. And it being in the 10th house, um, this is good positioning. Now, taking a look at some of the other planetary bodies, um, I think it's important to note uh, the Mars-Venus conjunction um, now it's in the 12th house, um, so there's some rectification between um, the male side and the female side, um, un understanding in a deeper philosophical level um, since it's located in the 12th house. Um, the next planetary body, of course, is the moon, um, which is interesting to note. A moon, of course, um, the 12th house and bordering the 12th house a lot of times is a deeper spiritual connection. Um, that comes about, and then the conjunction, of course, of all these three um, uh, is a byproduct. Is it creates a byproduct um, of a of, of some interesting development of the twelfth house. Um, so the final th um, thing that I want to mention is Saturn um, that conjuncts the seventh house. So Saturn being in the seventh house, um, understanding. Uh, some of those, some of the restrictions, um, in in terms of uh, maybe understanding things um, too rigidly as it pertains to um, others that you're that are around you. Um, so not only the methodological approach of um, Virgo, um, you also have Saturn kind of uh, in opposition of that. So, um, so there there there's some uh, tension here. Um, however, what's important to note is that Pisces, um, a Pisces Saturn is actually even more um, confusing in, in ways because of the rigid structure of Saturn um, versus the nebulous structure of uh, Neptune. Good um, opposition to um, keep an eye out, out for um, as it manifests within your individual personal lives. Um, it demonstrates um, this developmental phase um, uh, within the relations um, of surrounding individuals that you may uh, come across um, with. Um, so th th this is, uh, in summary, what is going on in the heavens um, on the 21st of June um, at 10.57 a.m. Um, Eastern Daylight Time. Um, and... I, I hope this makes sense. Thank you for listening.